Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of With a Side of Hustle, an opportunity for me to sit down with some friends and colleagues, talk about projects or businesses my friends have going on, and hopefully expand their network and tell their story to the masses. Uh, today I'm joined by my very good friend. We've actually just discovered we've known each other for quite a long time. Uh, Miss Dana Brady, how are you, Miss Dana? I'm great, Doug. Thank you so much. I have to ask because of the time that we're we're presently in. Uh, we were just talking about this, before, like literally before we started. Um, how is everything going? You, you all right? You're surviving this unprecedented yeah. time. <laughs> Missing the human contact. Um, loving the time I'm spending in my kitchen. I am getting totally creative with recipes and meals. And oh, I didn't know I had this in the freezer. What can we make out of it? So getting very creative with my dinners. But um. Okay. Yeah, hanging in there, ready for normal again, as most pe most people are. But yeah, uh, our pantry here is full of oh, oh, we shouldn't use this. That's <laughs> <laughs> so. Now we also we were just talking about how our connection sort of began. Uh, everyone who I've had on the show so far uh, has had a connection to me, basically through Disney, and that was where our our connection started. We were kind of figuring out. It's been like fifteen years, if not a little bit more. It's always the, we path, we cross paths and then we come back and then we go yeah. away and then we come back. Yep. A lot of connections through Disney Cruise Line, which um, I'll look at you with your fantasy. Now, <laughs> uh, I've had the privilege of working on two of the four, but I've sailed on all four ships. Do you have a favorite ship? I'm Disney super, Wonder. The yeah. Wonder. Why the, why is the Disney Wonder? Wonder, she'll always have my heart. Um, it, I spent a lot of time out there one summer um, helping to support a special sailing that we had. I watched the Phillies win the World Series while I was on the Wonder. And for anybody that knows me, I'm a very big Phillies fan. I love baseball. So to watch them win the World Series on my favorite ship, it, it, it beat watching them in my living room. Yeah, yeah so it was a good, is, a good time on that cruise. Is, is Philly home? Is that where you're from originally? Yes, originally. I moved, um, I graduated from school, um, graduated with a degree in marketing, and then moved down here to finish up, um, or to pick back up where I finished my college program, pushing that green button for, you know, <laughs> however many thousands of dollars my dad spent on my degree. But I went back and worked at Splash Mountain in um, the end of the summer of 2001. So we're talking today because uh, I... I know you, you've you been a yoga instructor for many, many years, and every time the uh, race, the Disney races come up, uh, you're like, hey, I'm going to do this thing, and you have, you've led yoga classes from the castle uh, mm -hmm. on Main Street, which I think is super, super cool. Before we get into how you got there, let's get a little goosebumps there. Let's, <laughs> before we get into how we got to doing that, let's go back to the yoga part. How did yoga become part of your life? So my husband, which is really weird, my husband is a yoga instructor, and it's very rare that there's male yoga instructors out there. Um, he used to go ev just about every year to a retreat in Carlsbad, California, through the Chopra Center. Um, if you're familiar with Deepak Chopra, he is, one of his most famous things is, um, his most famous books is The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. And it's a great book, and usually I have it with me, but I don't right now. Um, but it's a great book that kind of takes you through every day of the week and tells you, follow this law for this day and you'll find fulfillment in your life. You're not gonna win the lottery, you're not gonna own a multi-million dollar mansion, but you're just going to be very, very happy. He believes that success, it, 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 it drives from happiness. It, that's where it begins. So, you know, on Sunday, you spend time in silence, you don't judge people, you pay attention to nature, and you just, you follow these laws along the way. This was a little airy-fairy for me in the beginning, I will admit it. So every time he would go, I'm like, no, that's your thing. You can go, you can spend a week meditating and doing yoga. That's, that's your thing. You're Deepak, I'm Tupac. See you later. Have fun. So he would go on his way and he would do his retreat and he'd come home and it would be like a different person for a while. His, not in a bad way, in a really good way. I would notice little changes in him. Um, he's a very aware person. He, um, he notices things around him. He's very, he's very spiritual, but not in like the religious spiritual way, just very in tune with himself. So, you know, I would notice these little changes and eventually one year he wore me down and he'd always ask the question, even though I would say no, he'd always say, hey, I'm going to go out to Seduction of Spirit. That's the name of the um, event that we would go to. I'm going to go to Seduction of Spirit next month. Do you want to go? And one year I was like, you know, I think I do. You come and I'm also a, a half marathon runner. Mm -hmm. So I said, you come to my races all the time. So why don't I come to one of your events? And I drank the Kool-Aid. That was it for me. Being at this retreat for a week. We meditated three or four times a day. We did yoga twice a day. It was, it, I found a part of myself that I've never known was there. It just came out in me. And randomly one day, jokingly, I said, oh, I love being in yoga pants all day. This is so comfortable. I can't imagine <laughs> going back to work. And my husband said, well, you should be a yoga instructor. And I just like stopped in my tracks and I said, 
you know what? That's not a bad idea. So by the end of the retreat, I signed up to take what they call the teacher's path. Mm -hmm. And I became a certified yoga instructor through the Chopra Center. It's an offering that they're not, um, they're not offering it currently. You can become a primordial sound meditation instructor through them, but they don't offer yoga at the moment because a lot of their things have gone virtual. Um, it's something they're looking into, hopefully, because it, it was such a great experience. Um, I still am so close with so many of the friends that I made there, and we all keep in touch, and we share photos, and we've done a couple FaceTimes um, since we've all been home. But the, that experience in itself, I just, I take that, that first uh, retreat that I went to and then the two teacher lessons that I had to go to, I had to go back two separate weeks wow. and I just go back to that experience each time. And it really helped, it really helped me to realize that yoga is more than the physical. Sure, it brings, sure. it, it's, it's very emotional. It's very spiritual. Um, it's something, and I, I know we're going to touch on this later. But at this moment, it is something that is really beneficial for everyone. A combination of yoga and meditation are two really important tools that we have to help ease our anxiety to, you know, we're sitting a lot more. How many of us are watching Netflix all the time? I know I am. So we're sitting a lot more. Our muscles, we're not moving as much. So it, from a physical side, it is going to help you, but emotionally it does so many wonders. So um, I've, I've been teaching, I'm in my fifth year of teaching. I started teaching in 2016 and I teach twice a week after work to, um, to fellow cast members as part of our corporate program. And I've had, I, I keep a list of how many different uh, students I've had. I'm getting close to 300 students, 300 different individuals over that time. That's um, cool. Yeah. And for me, it's not about, I'm a yoga instructor. This is awesome. The, right. the, the most important part is when someone comes back to me after their first yoga session, they come back a week later and they say, I have not slept well in ages and I had the best night's sleep last night. Or um, I, my back has been in so much pain for three years because I had an injury and now I can move. When you hear that, thank you, just one student per session, that's all I need. Um, one student just comes up to say thank you. That is the most fulfilling thing about teaching, being a yoga instructor. I've probably just answered every single question you were going to ask me. I'm you, sorry. <laughs> you really did. Like you kind of covered all the things and you, you, um, in that, like, I, again, I've known you for a long, long time. I was always under the impression this was just sort of this extra fun thing you sort of did, like you knew about, I didn't realize how, um, in, in depth you really went to, to, to do it. Like how, how much it changed your life, thus changing other people's lives, just continuing that sort of path. In fact, to the point where I'm like, you just talked about things that drop, like I, I don't sleep well, my back hurts like crazy. It's for all those years of crew staff jumping around a, uh, a boat. Uh, so we're gonna, <laughs> offline, we're gonna talk more about <laughs> how, how personally we can work through all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, but now you, you mentioned that uh, you're a, you do corporate yoga. So let's dive into that for a quick second. Yep. How does, how do you go from, you know, just a couple classes with a couple people into the corporate yoga space? So I consider it corporate because it is after work and I'm, I'm teaching fellow employees and fellow cast members. And it's interesting because one, I teach two different nights a week in two different locations. In one location, it is primarily those nine to fivers. They're in, you know, they're sitting at a desk for the majority of the day. Um, they don't get up and they don't move a lot. So I'm able to say, okay, if you are in a seated position all day, you might experience sciatica. And sciatica is huge among, among people that sit all day. Um, so I'm able to give them movements that help to combat any issues that they deal with during the day. Sitting, and we've heard it before, sitting will kill you. It's not going to kill you, but it definitely has an impact on your body. Um, humans, you know, years and ages and centuries ago, all they did was walk. They never sat down. We are much more sedentary. So it's not that we shouldn't be sedentary. We should balance out our sedentary lifestyle with some kind of an active lifestyle, whether that's yoga or weightlifting or running. I do all three of them. And, and that has really helped me. Um, the yoga helps me with my running recovery and also with my weight training recovery. So you know, you, you, you focus on that portion. And then in my second class, I've got a combination of hourly cast members and people that sit at a desk. Um, so I'm able to say, if you stand all day, this is a great position for you. If you, you know, if you're doing a repetitive motion, how many of us are just pushing the green button all day? And that it's like carpal, you can get carpal tunnel just from pushing a green button. So I give mo movements that really help um, to deal with anything that they're dealing with. And I've got a lot of students that run as well. So they'll reach out to me and ask for great poses to help with recovery. So I'm there in the off hours as well. They'll reach out and say, hey, you know, I, I 
threw out my back this weekend and I can't move. Is there just a position I can sit in that'll help my back? And I'm able to help them with one or two poses that will help them. That's right. I know about 200 people who drive polka dots uh, around uh, Disney. So I'll mm -hmm. definitely connect them to you going, yeah. you know, sitting and driving all day. Like that's, I know yes. uh, I did it two and a half years and that was sort of the, my last uh, bit over there at Disney. And there were just times I was like, I cannot sit any longer. You get that, that sciatic nerve. Yeah. Um, when I sit in a car more than three hours, I start to feel it and I start to get antsy mm -hmm. and I can't sit for much longer and I've got to get out and stretch. And there's a lot of great stretches that will help with that. So yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, we'll definitely get into that in a second. Uh, <laughs> I think that's actually, that's one of the reasons why I, I actually stand while I'm doing these. So oh, this is actually good for me because just sitting and doing an interview, it's another hour, half hour, 45 minutes of stationary which i don't which is not me as much as i'm an introvert i'm extroverted so i need to move but move by myself yes that makes any sense and it's actually really good because you I'll, I'll this is this is a little bit of the benefit of yoga so when you're when you're at a computer all day and if you're seated or if you're at your phone you know you've got your phone here you're this like your your shoulders are going this is a little bit more exaggerated but your shoulders go over so you're pulling on your back you're you're compromising your posture so you're not standing up straight and the same thing with keyboard, like my hands are on my keyboard right now and my shoulders automatically go up. When you stand, it kind of puts you into the proper posture. So your shoulders go back and down, your hands are in front of you, your head is looking straight ahead at the monitor and you're able to have a straight spine. Right. So you're, what you're doing is, is you're doing standing yoga right now, you're doing working yoga, I'll call it that. <laughs> but what you're doing is a form of yoga. <laughs> So you're, what you're doing is right for your body. I'm doing something right. So we have the yoga piece. We have the corporate piece. We have, let's talk about the running piece now. How long have you been uh, a marathon participant? Um, so running. When I was in college, I gained the freshman 15, the sophomore 10, the junior 8, and I kind of leveled out in my senior year. I was bored on, it was Good Friday of my senior year in high school. So Good Friday, 2001, April something. I can't remember the date. Um, and I was bored and I had just bought a brand new pair of sneakers. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to go for a run in them. They're running sneakers. Let's see. And I've always convinced myself that I couldn't run because I had bad knees. So I went out for a mile and I came back and I felt incredible. For the last month and a half of my senior year, I went out for a run every single night after classes. I did a mile run. By the end of that summer, I was up to five miles. I ran from my house to my old grade school and back, and that was five miles, and that was my huge accomplishment. And I kept it up down here. Um, one of my former managers from Splash Mountain, I attribute, I attribute my racing to her. Um, I had run a 10K. It was the 10K Classic. It was Disney's 10K Classic in 2002. And I ran it. A 10K is 6.2 miles. Okay. I ran it and I loved it. I was on such a high. And I came back and I called my old manager and I said, Jill, oh my God, this was the best race I've ever run. She ran the Disney full marathon that next year. And I was a volunteer and she, I remember she came in by Tony's town square gate and I was standing right at the turn to go onto main street. And I was like, yes, go Jill. I was cheering for her. And she grabbed my hand and she said, you and me next year. And she ran off and I'm not really one to, to say no to a challenge. Sure. So I signed up for a full marathon after only running two 10 Ks. I ran the Walt Disney world marathon still before it was run Disney. Um, I ran the Walt Disney world marathon in 2004 um, and I, that started it. That was the beginning. I ran the Dis the, then they became run Disney. So I started running them every other year. Last year I turned 40 and I love the Beatles. I'm a very big Beatles fan. Found out that there was a half marathon in Liverpool that took place on the morning of my birthday. And I said, this is a sign. We have to yeah, do Yeah, that kind of, that definitely yeah. comes together. So, right? So we went out and I ran the Liverpool half marathon and I still cannot hear. It was a, it was part of the rock and roll race series and they had a DJ on Penny Lane and who you, I still can't hear Penny Lane to this day without choking up because the DJ was playing Penny Lane on a loop. So I got halfway down and I'm running and I took my earbuds out because I do listen to music when I run. I took out my earbuds just to take in the atmosphere. And I got halfway down Penny Lane because you make a U-turn and then come back, got halfway down before the U-turn and just started crying. And like, I'm such a goober and you can't run and cry at the same time. It's the worst asthma attack in the world. You can't, you can't focus your breathing. So I get down to the DJ where he's, he's playing the music. I make my U-turn and um, I'm like, I'm such a dork. I'm crying. And I see all these other people coming to me doing this. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not alone. Um, awesome. It was, it was probably the greatest half marathon of my life. 
um, just the scenery, the backdrop. And then we did two weeks in England afterwards. And I look back, that was almost a year ago. And that race has since been postponed until October. And I'm like, oh my God, everything, the universe just came together for me to run that race last year. It was incredible. So my mileage has upped so much that I have decided that on my birthday, which is May 26th, I'm going to run my 24th half marathon in my neighborhood. So I will be running 13.1 miles on my birthday, all because I don't want to gain the COVID-19. <laughs> that is, that is, that's awesome. So mm-hmm. basically what I've heard is challenge you and you'll go do it. That's, that seems not, to, maybe, no, 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 maybe, no. Okay, so let me rephrase. Let me, let me go <laughs> back. Within reason. Maybe invitation is better is a better yes. word to use than mm-hmm. challenge, um, but and then it's become kind of the passion. Someone going, I love this. You should join me in this. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think collectively throughout the world, like that's what we kind of need right now is someone to go, look. If you you can, if you if you can, it'd be great. If you don't, that's fine too. But I really think that this is something that you would be interested in. I think. Uh, especially again in the small business realm, we just need that one little person to push or to invite and say, I, I believe in you. You should believe in yourself too. And let's go do this, this together. Kind of like my mom used to say, try it. You might like it. Sure. And I love spinach. I love broccoli. <laughs> and it's all <laughs> because of my mom. <laughs> I like those things because I didn't, I wasn't given a choice. It wasn't like, Oh no, I'm not going to eat this. It's like, you're going to eat this or you don't eat. I'm like, that's fine too. All right. So I think we've come to the culmination of yoga and running. And now you do, and again, you've hosted yoga mm-hmm. from the castle stage of the magic kingdom. Yeah. How does that come about? So it was right before I got certified as an instructor in 2014 um, on our internal um, website for cast members, I saw a photo of um, someone teaching yoga in front of Sleeping Beauty Castle in Disneyland. And my husband, who was an instructor at the time, who's the only one of the two of us, I picked up the phone, I called him, I said, go to the hub right now and look at that photo. And I said, you need to do this. You need to call our wellness team and tell them that you want to do this. So he brought it into a conversation and they said, yeah, it's something we're working on. Okay. Out of sight, out of mind. I get certified. And I guess it was um, March or April of, oh God, what year was it? March or April of 2015. We get a phone call. Hi. um, Or no, we got an email. The email popped up. We were both copied. Hi, Dana and Adam. We're looking to teach yoga in front of Cinderella Castle and we would like you to be our instructors. I screamed. The whole office was like, what is going on? Are you okay? And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach yoga in front of Cinderella Castle. This is the greatest moment of my life. So I got super excited. We both taught. Um, he taught on the stage that year and I had one of the side stages because um, most people are familiar with the Magic Kingdom. The castle's there and the crowd can just come way back. So yeah. when you're a tiny little person doing yoga, it's hard to see. So they had all these auxiliary stages around. Well, then the second year, both of us stood up there and taught. So we both co-teach. And while it's an awesome experience in itself, the best part of it is being able to stand next to my husband, my best friend, and teach this together. Um, But it is the single most awesome experience of the year. It is incredible. Is it in correlation with Run Disney or all? Or is it, it's a complete separate event? It's internal for Disney cast members and it's sponsored by our wellness team. It's the, it's a Be Well event. It's incredible to go into the Magic Kingdom at 4 a.m. Oh, 4 a.m. It's really early. Okay. And there's, there, yeah, and there's <laughs> nobody in the park. There's That's just, fun. <laughs> it is very fun. And then they've turned off the music and they've put on our relaxing music. Wow. So you walk in and it's just this moment of Zen and you're overwhelmed with emotion. The, they, they got to the end of our music and they were playing some music from Tarzan. And um, that it always gets to me because that was the music um, that was the movie that came out during my first college program. So I have those emotional ties back to it. And I'm standing backstage just bawling. I haven't even walked on stage yet to see the castle. And I, like, we just got off out of our car and the tears are coming down. I'm like, what <laughs> is with me? It's just Tarzan. It's a man in a loincloth. It was such a moving experience. And to watch the, the park just transformed. The park is completely dark when you start and then the sun starts to rise and then all 1800 sets of eyes are looking at you. And then you go to do your first yoga pose. This was me the first, the, the second year. So the first year I was on stage. It's a pose called heaven and earth. And I just started, I showed it first and I said, you take your right hand and my right hand is like shaking like crazy. <laughs> and then I brought my hands back to center and I, for some reason, looked to my left. 
And one of my yoga students from my Monday night class was sitting off to my left. And that's exactly where she sits on Monday nights. So I looked at her and I said, it's just me and Jackie and it's Monday night. Okay, let's go. And I was, I was fine after that. Wow. And after you've taught in front of 1800 people, some executives and, and some sure. big people at Disney, nothing, there's no fear anymore. I, I have, my only fear was speaking in front of a camera and I've forced myself to overcome it during this quarantine. So <laughs> I don't have that fear is not, I don't know what I'm afraid of anymore. <laughs> yeah. Is there some sort of validation of being a yoga instructor when Disney says, Hey, we want you to do this here. Does it feel like all the, all that trepidation years ago of, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Does it all culminate into a moment of I've made it for lack of better term after every one of these events i usually turn to my husband or he'll come home and i'll come home and i'll say thank you thank you for everything that you've done that's brought me to this point thank you for continuing to ask me to go because i really wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him i i don't know that i would have found yoga um, or that yoga would have found me but i'm always so grateful for everything that he's done that has brought me to this point to, that brought me to the point to get my certification because after that it, it's on me. It's no offense. It's not him anymore, <laughs> but he's the <laughs> one, he's the one that brought me to it. And I have nothing but gratitude for everything that he has it, just his energy and everything that he's exemplified as part of these, these yoga laws and, and, and meditation and, and all of this mind body connection, everything that he's done. I'm so grateful for because it led me to this, but yeah, there is also that I'm awesome. I get to teach. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is that little bit of ego that comes out and screams, but then the ego goes back down and says, no, that's not what this is about. Not what this is about. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So now, and you're also, so no, you also teach during uh, the run Disney weekends at the expo. Let's talk about that. <laughs> a little bit. Did it, what came first? Did the, did the sun, did the King magic kingdom classes come first and it lended itself into run Disney or vice versa? Well, after, I can't remember which half marathon I had run, um, I came home and I was in our living room and I just started doing these poses. And I was so sore after this race. And my husband goes, you should jot these down. You should make a, a, a runner's class. I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. So I just started writing them down. And I thought back to one of my prior race expos. Um, I think it was 2008. I think it was the 2008 marathon um, that I ran. But somebody had introduced me to a Hal Higdon training program. And I started following it. And it's the training program I still continue to follow because I'm very superstitious. So it's the one that I still stick with. And he was there. And I met him. And I had him sign my program. And I just started thinking. And I'm like, they had some other seminars there that, that year, too. So I um, went around and, and started asking questions who manages our race expos and got connected with this awesome person over at Run Disney. And I went to her with a proposal and I said, here's what I would like to propose. I would love to teach yoga. I, and you tell me what you want, but I have a, a post-race yoga session already done. On the way, I was on the way for my husband's birthday to our favorite winery in Napa and the phone rang and I'm like, Hmm, what's this call? And it's, it's her. Hi, Dana. Are you still teaching yoga? I said, I am. And she said, we would like you to teach at the expo at the end of this month. So 2017 was the first okay. year that I taught. Um, I taught at the uh, wine and dine race expo. They, they teach you foam rolling. So there's a lot going on at these interactive zones and it's great that they're offering it. And I'm so grateful that they continue to offer um, yoga. I have some regulars that continue to come back and there's actually somebody local that goes to my class. She doesn't, she doesn't always run the races, but she always makes it a point to come to at least one of my classes, which is really cool. Um, so I post those schedules on my, my social media as well, right before those come up. And what a perfect transition into the social media aspect <laughs> yeah. of all of it. So uh, yes. if, you're, if you're going to run Disney, if you're running Disney in, in the future, seek out Dana. You take one of her classes. Again, uh, and one of the reasons I had her, we asked her to come on is, again, we've been friends, and I know this is a huge passion of hers. And um, there's always a part of me that's like, man, I should really, I should really do that. Do I? No. But maybe that'll change over, over the next course here but as we had now we're uh, we're going to fast forward to this present time where you can't have people in a room you can't have an actual class you have done what the world is doing and extended to social media i was just actually looking yeah. at your facebook page before we began and i was like cool all that stuff there you have some great food options on there as well some pictures of your of your food what is the official title of your of your company i am go with the flow and where did that come? I know where it comes from for me. Where did it come from <laughs> for you? So I, I can't even remember. I had another company name. When I went to file for the name, somebody else had taken it. 
I have to have a company name because I need that in order to get paid because, you know, it's great giving this gift of yoga to people, but I really want to get some compensation for it. Oh, yeah. So I need to create this business. I don't know what to do. I had heard somebody say, I'm oh, you know, just go with the flow. I'm like, that's it. Go with the flow. And my husband looked at me and he goes, yeah, you, you, you teach what you need to learn the most. And he's right. I'm a very, I, I have a hard time adapting to change. So yes, I'm teaching what I need to learn the most. And I think it has actually helped me because I'm adapting to change so much more and so much better now. It's go with the flow. And um, I wanted something that encompassed a lot. But in case for any reason I took on some more talents or some more certifications, it's not just Dana's yoga. So it incorporates so much more and go with the flow can be translated into so many things. There's the physical flow of yoga. Um, I always like to say yoga helps you to feel more flexible, both on the mat and off the mat. So your, you know, your, your stresses don't stress you out as much. Water just kind of runs off your back. So that's the go with the flow portion for off the mat. So where do we find you? How are you watching during all this, this uh, crazy? So I teach, um, I'm uploading videos twice a week to YouTube. And I think there's about 13 up there. I'm trying to do Monday and Friday. Um, and they run the gamut. I've got three runner videos up there. I have one that I call wake up yoga. And it's just, I don't feel like getting out of bed today. I don't feel like moving. So it's just some poses you can do while you're in bed. It's like 15, 20 minutes. Um, I go from wake up yoga, which is really relaxing to a session that I just did last week with 13 sun salutations in it. And it's a challenging class. Um, I will tell you, I had to film it three times. I fell twice. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and by the, by the final time that I filmed it, I was just angry. I'm like, I'm done. This is, this is going, I stumble a little bit, but you can't see me. Um, but that was, that was a challenging one. So I, I give a little bit of something for everybody. Um, you can find that one on YouTube at Go With The Flow, Dana Brady. So if you do that search, it'll come up. It's me in a little meditative position. And I would love to have you subscribe. I'm uploading content regularly. Um, I have a couple filmed already so that I'm ahead of myself. But I'm, my brain is always going like, oh, that's a good one. I, I just did one on Monday, which I think is really beneficial for right now. It's yoga for anxiety. And I know a lot of us, um, anxiety can make its way known in so many different forms. And these poses just kind of help you deal with the unknown. That's what we're all dealing with right now. It's not the fear of I'm going to walk out my door and get coronavirus. I think the underlying fear for most people is what's going to happen. What's going to happen with my job? What's going to happen with my health? What's going to happen with my finances? That's the biggest fear for most people. And that's what causes so much anxiety. Once you start to realize I can't control the unknown and you just, you kind of surrender and you learn to go with the flow. Um, these poses help to calm your mind. And I did them on Friday and I came back in the house after filming and I was done. I was tapped out for the day. I taught it and I was, I was conked out. It really helped to relax me. So um, firsthand experience is very beneficial. Um, so that one is up, but that one, that uh, YouTube is go with the flow, Dana Brady. I'm also on Instagram mm -hmm. and I'm, Instagram's the fun one. So I'm just, I'm posting poses and then I'm posting, um, somebody told me your dinners are so good. You should post your dinner. So I'm trying to post all the dinners that I'm doing during COVID. So that one is go with the flow underscore Dana Brady. And um, that's on Instagram. And then you can also follow me on Facebook because, you know, there's so many different platforms now yeah. and all one word go with the flow Yogi, Y-O-G-I. Um, that's all one word on Facebook and anything I post on Instagram makes its way over to Facebook as well. Through both platforms, once a week, I'm also teaching um, virtual yoga. So they're anywhere from 30 to 45 minute sessions. Um, usually it's Tuesday night, but this year was Cinco de Mayo and I wanted everyone to celebrate. So I taught on Monday, um, but I, I alternate one week I'll teach on Instagram and the next week I teach on Facebook. And those are, so you're doing those live Mm -hmm. and, and, and follow along. Cool. Yep. Uh, I was, what well, I was about to say, uh, here on the YouTube, obviously all mm -hmm. of the links and description of everything she just talked about is going to be in the comments and, and, uh, about section below us here. Dana, I think I I'm inspired, uh, to Thank definitely you. start. I will, I'll be watching closely. Um, Hopefully, anybody who's watching out there is inspired mm -hmm. as well. And hopefully, that subscription goes up and uh, you'll see some friendly faces. And uh, for that, in fact, if uh, if you do start following Miss Dana through uh, this interview, um, I don't know, comment on her page, uh, Side of Hustle, or with the Side of Hustle, or my name, Doug Neville, whichever you choose, just so you, she has an idea of where people come from. I think it'd be cool to see uh, where it all goes. Uh, anything else you want to share with us before we wrap this up? I, I we have. A to Z, like that story is absolutely incredible. And like I said, I'm inspired to do to do more. Um, and uh, I'm very thankful for our friendship. So uh, you'll be hearing from me a lot more often than just awesome. 
random crossing throughout uh, the <laughs> Orlando area. Uh, but yeah, anything else you want to share with us before we, we take off here? No, um, I'm, the, the one thing I'm looking forward to is when we can't shake hands anymore, we can all do the yoga. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> awesome. And thank you so much for joining me. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, any questions, comments, concerns, all those links in below, comment down below. All the YouTube mantra of like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of With a Side of Hustle. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Namaste. <laughs>